Hey, all right, guys, how's it going? Well, today's video is all about tomatoes. And there's all different types. We've got um, chopped tomatoes in this one. Finely chopped tomatoes in this one. Ready to eat whole tomatoes. Must be pretty small in that tin there. And that's a passata. That's passata, which is like a thick tomato sauce. And there's one I processed myself last year with a piece of basil in it. What? I think the boss wants you to talk about real tomatoes, oh. not processed tomatoes. Well, he didn't let me explain it very well, did he? All right, guys, uh, today's video is all about fresh tomatoes. Let's get on with it. Right then, I need to harvest or pick a load of these uh, Red Alert tomatoes because they're falling over and I can't support them. I didn't buy a you know a proper support for the uh, the grow bag. This is that um, me growing by the trench method for these two, and normal method by that one there, which is the one that's fallen over. <laughs> right, let's get a few. I'll put them in a bowl and uh, get back to you. That's not a bad lot and three plants. And there's still lot, still loads more on there. Just uh, I've just taken the ripest. This one here looks snapped where it's so heavy, look. <laughs> yeah, not bad long. Wait, well, weigh those. I want to make some tomato juice with those. Fancy a drink of tomato juice. Whew, all right, guys. Just going to quickly knock up some uh, tomato juice from the red alerts I picked uh, earlier. So what do you want for this then? We got, I'm using the old Ninja cold press juicer. Fine, coarse, or not medium and coarse. I think medium for tomatoes. Right, a uh, juice jug, a rubbish jug, valve open, podger out. Right, here we go then, that's what we got. Don't take too long. Not bad, not bad. Half a litre of fine tomato juice and a little bit less of the coarse. So yeah, coarse has got a few seeds in it. Let's go with the... Oh, that's a lot thicker. Let's have that. Pure tomato juice, no salt, nothing like that in it. Oh, it's nice. Hmm. And the coarse one, yeah, it's got a few seeds in it, not matter. Put that through a sieve, I suppose. Yeah, I might do that. Why I'm tasting the two. It's the same tomatoes. <laughs> mm. oh, that's nice. Right, the breakfast drinks for a couple of days. Mm. Yeah. So we have half a litre that is. Milk made bottle. There's a milk made machine, I don't know, three miles from me. Fresh milk and he can put all these different flavours in it. Lovely. Pop in there on the way past sometimes. If I remember to take the bottle with me, otherwise you could buy a new bottle. Yes, Steve, up in the fridge with that. And what I'll do with this one, I'll, go, I'll sieve this one, I think. 
I do like tomatoes. Tomatoes and potatoes. Potatoes first, I think. My favourite veg to grow. And then tomatoes. Same family. <laughs> what would be after tomatoes? I do like the runner beans. But they aren't doing very well at all this year. Um, yeah, I mean, that's for another video, isn't it? Oh, I have to drink some now, aren't I? Lovely. Man. Onwards and upwards. Okay then, in the centre pot there, <laughs> on the uh, the Wicked Hydroponics, another one, is uh, Leanne's Ushi, Oishi Pink. Uh, I've taken the bottom leaves off below the first truss, taken the leaves off below the second truss, just see that in there, look. And um, well, it's growing massive. <laughs> it's a bit. Yeah. That's, um, that's got to be seven foot tall easily for an outdoor tomato. Indoor tomato growing outdoors, sorry. Yeah, there's. Um, we've got one, two. That's the second truss there. Hard to see because it's all green. Third truss behind there. Fourth truss with just ooh, uh, one tomato on it. Another one tomato there. And the, I'm going to stop it there at the sixth truss. I'm going to have to go and get a ladder. <laughs> or my hedge loppers. It's quite a tall tomato, that one. Right, while we're here then, we've got the, uh, the tumblers in the baskets. These are fantastic. I mean, I'll keep on about them, I know, but what a productive tomato. I think I've probably given away more than I can eat. And it's still flowering, still flowering, look. Yeah, brilliant. Right, there's the uh, overview of the hydroponic wicking system. Basically, we've got one quad grow going across the wall of the house. Well, I say wall, it's the front shed. People keep knocking at that door there, thinking it's the front door, but it's actually a shed. And we've got another set of um, quad grows, 90 degrees to it there, look. I'll try and do a bit of footage on my uh, Samsung Galaxy S21, because it's got a, a 0 0.6 zoom function, so you can get a bigger overall picture. Right, so let's see what we got then. So across the back we've got Cherokee, Chirami, Meccano and Crimson Crush that you can't see. And coming out this way we've got um, Pink Brandywine, Rose de Burn, Brad's Atomic Grape and Big Mama there by the Marigolds. Okay now, so in the first pot, Cherokee. Now these are an RZ tomato and there's a few, there's a few there. And quite a few flowers still. That um, heat wave hit the flowers pretty hard. Got a lot of dry setting. Right, the second one in, that is Chirami, or Chirami. Yeah, Chirami. Now look at the trusses on that. Well, that's all what one stem, that is. And we've even got a flower stem poking out from under the lid. So, um, as long as they taste all right, which will be maybe tomorrow, um, and they will definitely be on the list for next year. And coming up slowly, look, they're all the way up. All the way up, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We'll go on the other side in a minute and see them from both sides. Okay then, so coming out a little bit to the first pot going that way, that is the uh, pink brandy wine. Now this is one that I've missed and it's sent up two liters. And strangely enough, the side shoot is the one with the fruit on it. All the way up here, look, I've had to tie it in separate. I've even, if you can see it, I've even strung it up to the bamboo above it. Um, we've had a lot of, um, I think it's called dry setting of the flowers. Let me try and show you against the sun. I'll come on the other side in a minute anyway, like I said. Yeah, horrible, look, just nothing there. But, 
there's a few more above, so fingers crossed on those. Next over, we'll get that one on the other side because you can't see it from here. Then we got um, Brad's Atomic Grape. Fantastic. Oh, what a lovely tomato. Weirdest taste ever. Or well, weirdest tomato ever and great taste. So, yeah, and there's loads more of those coming up here. And again, I'm letting this just sprawl. I'm not taking any side shoots off that one. And round the other side now then. Here we are then, round the other side now. You can probably see now that the pink brandy wine looks a bit pinker from this side. A little bit of sun flicker on it at the moment. Yeah, loads on there, loads. Right, this is why I came round the other side, because the truss of this uh, tomato here, rose to burn, is all this side, all the tomatoes of this side. Another one that's sort of um, split and gone everywhere. Look, there's a joint there, so flowers that way, flowers that way, <laughs> all everywhere. And right at the end of this lot we have Big Mama. And what I've done with this one, I've taken each truss down to one tomato. So we've got one there, one there, one there. Got one form in there, and I'll uh, stop that as soon as that one's uh, take those flowers off as soon as that one gets a bit bigger. And we got a side shoot there. I'll leave that till a bit later on. I'll tie them in today. This tomato is another RZ one. It's um, Meccano. Very, very uh, nice shape tomato. If you know what I mean, it's. Um, it's supposed to be good on the show bench, this one, and there's a lot of them as well. This is so hard to do, this. Yeah. So again, what we got? One, two, three. That's four trusses to there. And we got uh, another one there. That, oh, might have just got one or two fruits on it. And we got one more up there, so I'll probably stop that there. Okay, last on the hydroponics is Crimson Crush. Everyone's favourite. It is a bit blight resistant, but apparently I've been reading that the, the blight resistance is wearing off a little bit because uh, the blight itself is adapting. And so the resistance or the resilience, whatever you want to call it, isn't quite as good as it was anyway. But there's loads of other products now in the uh, Crimson range. Products. <laughs> there's loads of other varieties now in the, the Crimson range, so maybe they've perfected it again. Loads in there, loads. And the, uh, the little volunteer tomatoes actually got some fruits now. That's just grew in the, uh, well, what is now the parsnip box, parsnip and uh, root parsley box. And that must have been from a dropped tomato last year. No idea what type it is. And just out the front by the veggie pod, we got a couple of uh, Heinz 1350. Put my crib sheet in my pocket. Now, this, uh, this hot weather didn't do them any favours. We got some funny shaped fruits coming on them. But, uh, yeah, see, it's a bit of leaf curl on this. Now, this one's had leaf curl almost ever since I planted it. And that is leaf curl. Whereas the, uh, the suspected poison tomatoes, well, they're still curling. <laughs> they're still looking fern-like. Worse and worse. They're gradually dying off. Now, I'm thinking that the actual, if it is, I'm saying if it is, uh, amino pyrrolid poisoning was very, very, very weak because it's still growing. And it's still trying to mature the fruits. I mean, we got, that probably is blossom end rot, but. The shapes of them are all weird. You know, they don't look right. Anyway, and that is uh, Britain's breakfast, sorry. You see, even the new growth is curling up. But the other one was worse. This is um, Amish paste, this one. And this one was always the worst, but again, it's still fr it's fruiting. But look, the new growth. And there's the old growth on it, look. Horrible. It's a bit confusing because there's two in one pot. But we'll see. Okay then, I mentioned the uh, the bioassay for the amino pyrrolid. 
the one that Corteva have asked me to do. And this top lot is in living green compost. So the broad beans are looking quite good. And the ones below it, even though they look good, they've just, today or yesterday actually, just started curling a little bit. See? A bit deformed there as well, you know. So um, I'm thinking that if there was poisoning, it's very, very weak because it's hardly showing. Maybe we shouldn't have diluted the compost. Should have planted it neat, you know, planted the beans neat. But just to show you as well, the radish is not affected at all. And here's the red alerts in the grow bag, the trench method, two of them, as you know. Still producing, um, and quite a few of those have uh, ripened even further since I took the one and a half kilograms off it the other day. So they're a nice tomato. They're on the list for next year as well, definitely. And one more lot I've got, uh, they've dotted around everywhere, these um, little tiny one, Mini Bell. Hmm, not on my list for next year. They're, they're okay, but there's such thick skins on them. So it's not really, you know, they don't compete with anything else really. So yeah, I've got them dotted around all over the bazaars. And we've got two more Brad's Atomic Grape on the driveway. Um, these are uh, fruiting like mad as well. Oh, I'm really ready for picking that one. And there's loads behind here. Look. They're a funny tomato. Whatever colour they are, they're the right colour for picking as long as they're ripe. You know, they don't seem to have any conformity. The other day I had bright red ones. I mean, like that, bright red. Get that leaf out of the way. <laughs> so the other day I had bright red ones like that. Yeah, just about right. And we've got stripy ones, and that's yeah, a squidgy ready to eat. So weird. Yeah, so we got a couple more uh, Brad's Atomics on the way, I reckon. Right, last tomato. Except it might not be the last tomato because it depends how you edit it. <laughs> Right, this is the, um, these are the long runner beans, 20, was it 16 to 25 inches long, the, the beans in there. But we have a volunteer tomato in there. And if I can keep out the sun, loads of trusses on it. So if it's trussing like that, then I'm thinking it's either a Roma VF from last year or an Amish paste. Now, Amish paste tomatoes have got a little um, nipple on the end. Let's try and find a more mature one. And they haven't, so I'm thinking they're probably Roma. Well, I can't think how it got in there. I must have just dumped a load of um, compost in the bucket just to top it up a bit. I even tied them up. Again, I've left all the side shoots, left every single one. Look, this one here, look, this is good. Nature in harmony, look. Oh, can't get in there. The runner bean is twined around the tomato and holding it up. I can probably take that little wire off now. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And the tomatoes, again, the tomatoes up there, look. And, the, and this uh, tomatoes at the top. I wonder if the smell is keeping the black fly away as well, because I don't, don't tend to get um, black fly on tomatoes. Oh, wish we hadn't said that. Okay, then up the uh, leaf and ground plot, my little tomato bed. Now, I can't for the life of me remember what the varieties are in here. But they're all fruiting pretty well. When I do the video, I'll, I'll put the, uh, the names of the, the varieties up. I know there's a couple of Crimson Crush there, I've been picking off those, there's some Roma somewhere. <laughs> the only one that's not really flowering is this, um, fruiting, is this one here. But it is flowering, so... I mean, I've got a lot of dry flowers as well, I'm hoping that heat, I expect. They're yeah, doing alright. These are the ones I sort of pick when I'm up here and have a little munch while I'm here, rather than just uh, 
take them home and save them. Yeah, let's see, I'll put the varieties up later. Oh, what I'm doing with these, I'm just letting them ramble. I'm not bothered uh, picking the side shoots out. As you can see here, look, I mean, there's one there. There's two different ones tied up here. There's another one poking out the front. There's one poking out there and he's tying up in a minute. Yeah, they're not bad. <laughs> yeah, sort of jewelry rig there holding things together. That one there's climbing up a bit of string. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Just a quick insight to uh, my world of tomatoes. I'm not far off having enough tomatoes for the first of this year's taste tests, so uh, watch out for that. Look after yourselves out there and I'll catch you soon.